Today I have been given a challenge build that comes from one of your fellow viewers, Marco Hazard. Marco asked us to make a blood chemist, someone who uses blood and alchemic mixtures to enhance themselves or their allies. So I took this concept and I made something that I would frankly call a monster. This character is going to do a ton of damage while being extremely tanky in the front line. This is the Blood Spartan. Before getting into the video, I wanted to shout out our sponsor, Obvious Mimic. Obvious Mimic is the creator of the Wolves of Langston. It's something that I've reviewed on this channel. I did the first chapter playthrough and I loved it. It was a ton of fun and it has a, the perfect atmosphere. They were really good at creating a tangible atmosphere, very descriptive, and it's perfect for Halloween. So if you want to enjoy a Halloween vibe solo adventure, I can't recommend the Wolves of Langston enough. Obvious Mimic also has some pretty awesome merch. I particularly like this I Am Not a Mimic shirt. You can find both the Wolves of Langston and their merch store in the description down below. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. The idea I was going for with the Blood Spartan is kind of like the old school alchemist where you are injecting yourself with chemicals and going for a more martial element, but the idea is that you're like juicing yourself up, kind of like Hulk feeling where you are you juice yourself up to be way stronger than you otherwise would be. As for our lineage, we're going to go custom lineage. This is going to give us a feat right out the gate and we want to pick up the polearm master feat. We're also going to get dark vision from it and that's going to help us out through the rest of our career. As for our stats strength is by far the most important followed by constitution then probably wisdom but there's an argument for intelligence and let me explain that a little bit as a blood hunter normally your tertiary was going to be intelligence however they gave a variant feature that allows it to be wisdom instead however they don't really specify whether or not you can multi-class with wisdom if you choose to use that variant feature i assume yes and i assume most dms are going to say yes as well however if they're sticklers for rules as written they might say that you have to go into intelligence and just so you know, either one you do is going to be completely fine. Going into intelligence isn't going to ruin the build at all. It just means we're going to have a slightly worse wisdom save. For this build, I'm assuming that you can go into wisdom as your tertiary. As for our leveling structure, we're going to do one level into fighter. We're then going to do five levels into blood hunter. We're then going to do three more levels into fighter and the remainder will go into blood hunter. All right, let's get into the level by level breakdown. Usually I don't talk about background too much, but with this build, I do want to mention it. I want to pick up the alchemist supplies proficiency from our background. And this is going to allow us to actually be a chemist and create potions and whatnot, whether or not we're including our blood flavor in them, more of that will come later, but I wanted to pick it up here just to round out that flavor. I'm going to also be picking up a bunch of skills to round out that flavor, some of which are going to come from being a fighter, some of which are going to come from our background. I'm looking at athletics because we're going to be extremely strong and so we're going to be doing athletics things, it's just going to happen. I want to pick up survival and perception because it synergizes with our first feature that we get from being a blood hunter, which gives us advantage on survival and perception checks to certain kinds of creatures. And then I want to pick up nature and that's to represent us being alchemists so that we want to use that nature skill to create awesome potions, etc. All right, next up is level one. And I just got to say, we come out swinging. We come out extremely strong. This level one, we're going to have heavy armor, the best heavy armor we can get, plus defensive fighting style, plus a shield. So our AC is going to be 19 right out the gate and we'll become 21 once we manage to get our hands on plate. Additionally, we're going to have the spear in our offhand, which is going to give us a an attack and a bonus action attack. So we're getting two attacks at level one. So we're going to be great there as well. We also come with con saves, which may or may not come into play later down the line. I'll discuss that when we get there. Level two, we go into Blood Hunter and we get Hunter's Bane. This is going to give us that advantage on perception and tracking survival checks against Fae, Fiend, and Undead, which is fine. Those are common enemies, and so when it comes up, it'll feel good. We also are going to get our Blood Curse. I'm going to go with Blood Curse of the Eyeless. This stays away from our action economy of our attack and bonus action attack, and it uses a reaction instead and enhances our own defense as well as our allies, and having a 19 to 20 one AC, this is really going to shine. This is definitely some flavor stuff you can do here. You can change your blood curse to being like a vial of liquid that when someone's attacking you, you open it up and it creates this like mist that makes it you harder to hit. Have fun with the flavoring of being an alchemist mixed with a marshal. That's kind of where this character shines. Level three or blood hunter two is a big level for us. We're getting a fighting style and we're going to pick up the dueling fighting styles. So we're going to get a plus two to every single attack we make. And because we're focusing on making multiple attacks, that plus two is proc more often. Crimson Wright loves to be combined with as many attacks as possible. So we're really stacking the amount of attacks we have and making them extremely efficient here. I'm going to take the lightning right just because it has the best coverage. So at this level, 
level, we're going to be doing one attack. That's 1d6 plus 1d4. Assuming we have a plus three to our strength, it's going to be plus five damage on top of that. And we have a second attack. That's 2d4 plus that same plus five. Really strong. At level four, Blood Hunter 3, we're going to go with the Order of the Mutant, and we're going to take the Potent Mutagen. This gives us a plus three to our strength, and this plus three can extend over our maximum. And once we hit level 11 in this class, it becomes a plus four, and later it becomes a plus five, but we'll never get to that level because we are multi-classing. And so we're going to cap out at plus four, but for most of our career, it's going to be plus three. This is instantly going to give us either a plus one or a plus two to our damage and our two hit, depending on whether or not our strength was even or odd. Now, because we went custom lineage and took plus two to our strength, I'm going to assume that we're at 17 for the discussion of this build, but just know that you did definitely don't have to be. But what's interesting about this build is that it kind of changes how you want to do your strength structure. You usually want to get only evens. This one kind of changes you to only wanting odds until really late. Probably levels we're never going to get to. And so you're wanting to do odd strength instead. So if you're at 17, you want to bump it to 19. And if you're at 16, you want to bump it to 17. It's kind of weird. So you would take the half feet with the even number instead of the odd in this case. As for a half feet, I'd probably be looking at skill expert to get expertise on athletics, which just makes us really good at being the strong boy. I wanted to flavor this mutagen as definitely the most blood chemist moment where, that we have. We're, you know, interacting with our chemistry set and we create this mutagen. Then we inject it into ourselves and we just get enhanced and our strength starts bulging and we just look super strong and whatnot. Something to note about this mutagen is it does give us disadvantage on dexterity saves and it's going to give us a dexterity weakness. Now, normally I don't like weaknesses, but I'm actually kind of excited for this weakness because I think dexterity weaknesses are fairly rare with the exception of like clerics and so it's kind of fun to have that and be worried about those deck saves so i'm honestly looking forward to it but we will do something to kind of buffer that out later down the line the other mutagens i would pick up would be ones that don't come up very often the potency is what i'm going to be using almost always but there's going to be certain days where maybe there's a day where we're not going to be getting into any combat and i'm fairly confident about that and it's going to be social situations i can pick up alluring to give us the advantage on our charisma checks for the whole day making us much more of a face and that's kind of the idea is you want to have a customized potion for different days, but overall potency is going to be the standout for our combat potential. Level 5 is Bloodhunter 4 and ASI. We're definitely going to bump our strength once more. So I'm going to assume we're at 19 strength now, and the plus 3 is going to get us to 22 strength, so we're going to have a plus 6 to strength. Level 6, Bloodhunter 5. Once you combine that with the dueling fighting style, we're going to be doing 8 points of damage on every single attack before we even roll dice, and our dice are significant. Even more significant now that our Crimson right dice has bumped as well. So our attacks are going to be two attacks that are going to be 2d6 plus 8 each, and then we have 1d4 plus 1d6 plus 8 as well. That's a lot of damage coming out. How much damage? Well, at 16 AC, it's going to be about 35 damage per round. Now that's a lot of damage! At level 7, we're bouncing back into fighter. We're going to go pick up Action Surge. Our attacks are extremely efficient, and so we want to celebrate that by giving us more of them. We can do a burst amount of damage now. Level 8, we get Fighter 3 and we open ourselves up to a subclass. There are a ton of subclasses you can take. Echo Knight, Cavalier, Champion, Psy Warrior, Battlemaster, Rune Knight. All of these you could do a fantastic build and all have their own niches. Some you would want intelligence, like Psy Warrior, you would want your tertiary to be intelligent instead of wisdom, but whatever the case is, you can find a lot of flexibility here. But personally, I'm gonna be going Eldritch Knight. Why? Well, first off, we're gonna be getting Absorb Elements. That's gonna help us buffer this dexterity weakness that we have. Additionally, we get Shield, taking our already 21 AC to 26 AC when we really, really need it. And then we also get Find Familiar, which we all know is just probably the best first level spell in the game. So we're happy to pick it up here. At level nine, we're going to be picking up Fighter Forward. This is going to give us an additional spell slot as an Eldritch Knight. And there's a couple different options we can do here. Something I want to mention is picking up Fey Touched here. Going to round out whatever mental stat we want. And it's also going to give us either Hex or Hunter's Mark. Again, we are compounding the amount of attacks we're doing and trying to make them extremely efficient. So adding an extra D6 per attack is just great. It's an extra 3d6 per turn. We also have constitution proficiency, so our con saves are going to naturally be pretty strong on top of having a fantastic AC and shield to back it up. And we're also going to get Misty Step, which is just fantastic. It helps us in every regard. Another option and the option you would go with if you didn't go Eldritch Knight and you went any of the other subclasses is Resilient Wisdom. Resilient Wisdom is really going to buffer out our wisdom weakness and just make our saves there quite a bit stronger, which is really important for being a martial so we're not 
not turning on our teammates or being feared or charmed or whatever. Level 10, we're going back into Blood Hunter and we're gonna be picking up the brand of castigation. Now for us, the brand of castigation isn't huge. It does mark someone so they can't flee from us, but the bigger deal is that it gives us some thorns damage against their attacks, both to us and anyone within five feet of us, any of our allies. And so if we are going up against someone and we think it's gonna be this mono e mono match where we smack them, they smack us, this is a good time to set up the brand of castigation. All right, level 11, we're getting Blood Hunter 7, and this means we're getting some new mutagens. We're gonna be able to drink two potions a day. Now, the second potion I'm looking up is gonna be Mobile. Now, Mobile is really interesting. It gives us disadvantage on our athletic strength checks, so that's kind of bad, but it makes us completely immune to the grappled condition as well as the restrained condition. And eventually, it's gonna give us immunity to the paralyzed condition as well. Additionally, on this level, by being a mutant, we also get immunity to the poison condition. So now we're in this really interesting position where in one level, we basically took care of most conditions that you're gonna run into on the front line. We just gained immunity to the grappled and restrained conditions, which are extremely common. A lot of times they're just forced on you. And by being the frontliner who's taking the hits, they're, they're very forced on you. And so it's just nice to just completely ignore those. The poison condition is extremely common as well, and it sucks for marshals. So us being immune to that is also very good. We're just gonna keep continuing into Blood Hunter. You guys got it from here. We're gonna eventually get to 24 strength. Our Crimson Right dice is gonna keep enhancing. So our damage is just gonna keep getting better and better. So what are we at the end of the day? Well, we're a bruiser. We just are statted out. We're not really synergizing with our team that much at all. We're basically just running in there and being massively tanky and hitting like a truck and just being a ball of stats that's running around and murdering people. And sometimes that's a lot of fun. Very simple, straightforward gameplay. Our weakness would be ranged combat. Our flavor is definitely kind of the Hulk out, inject ourselves with venom serum. It's very Bane-esque where you inject yourself, get super strong and go do crazy stuff. Seems like a lot of fun to me. Can be unique flavor. I wanna give another shout out to our friends over at Obvious mimic don't forget to check out the wolves of langston it's an awesome adventure and pick up a shirt while you're there all right but with that my friends hope you have yourselves a wonderful day i'll catch you on the next one peace